This is an exam question given this year to high school students in Turkey. A project team consists of 100 people. Every member is appointed to an equal number of projects. No two people are appointed to the exact same projects. The situation cannot be achieved if every member is appointed to three projects, but can be achieved if every member is appointed to four projects. So, how many projects does the team have? 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10. Have a think, I'll answer in a minute, but first let's take a step back and think about how we got here. This question is from an exam paper called AYT, which is one of two papers given to high school students in Turkey who wish to gain entrance to university. It is sat by over 2.5 million students per year and contains questions about Turkish language, social science, mathematics and science. And as is a common theme with exams like this from around the world, this exam can really be a make or break moment in the lives of young people. Turkey has its own breed of cram schools and I've received plenty of comments from Turkish students about this exam and how it has impacted their life. Here's one that says of the more than 2 million people who take it every year, that only a few rank high enough to get into the best universities. It is considered as an only chance at a good future by everyone. Most people start studying two years before the exam, and in the last year, people can study up to 10 to 15 plus hours a day. You'd better hope that you're a good all-rounder because the exam paper combines all of the different subjects together and you have 180 minutes to answer 166 questions. This math question I showed was number 15 on the 2021 paper and was particularly controversial because of its difficulty. A similar type of problem appeared on the Turkish Mathematical Olympiad, so students were left wondering why an Olympiad level question was given to everyone, including those who have no intention to major in math. To understand it, I want to talk about something called the pigeonhole principle. In mathematics, the pigeonhole principle states that if n items are put into m containers, with n being greater than m, then at least one container must contain more than one item. So over here, if we have 10 pigeons dispersed within 9 pigeon holes, then since 10 is greater than 9, then there will be at least one pigeon hole that has more than one pigeon. And up here we can see this one has two pigeons in it. Honestly, a little too obvious, a little too basic to seem useful, but actually we can use it to solve our problem. Our problem is one of finding the containers. Our items, n, is 100 people. And these 100 people are being dispersed across the containers, but our containers are not the projects. Our containers are the unique sets of projects that each person is appointed to. So if x is the total number of projects, then the set of all projects goes from p1 up to px. If everyone is appointed to three projects, then the containers would represent each unique combination of three projects. The first container might have p1, p2, p3, the next one p1, p2, p4, then p1, p2, p5, and so on until we've had every unique combination. The question requires that no two people are appointed to the exact same projects, which would be two people, or I guess we can use turkeys, in one container. But we also know from the question that for three projects each, the situation doesn't work out. So actually, we are going to have at least one container with more than one person in it. So let's find out when that happens. According to the pigeonhole principle, it's when n is greater than m. So when we have more people or turkeys than we do containers, we know that we have 100 people, so if the number of containers is anything less than 100, we're going to have some double ups. But how do we find the number of containers? How do we find the unique combinations of three projects? Well, we can use the combinations formula, n choose r, also can be written like this. So we want x choose 3 to be less than 100, we know we're going to have some double ups. Our options for x are 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10. 
And of these, 10 choose 3 is the only one that's not less than 100, so it can be ruled out as a possible answer. Now let's see about 4 projects each. We know that this time it will all work out and there will be no double ups. Our containers are all the unique combinations of 4 projects, and the number of containers is given by x choose 4. And this time we want that value to be more than or equal to 100. 6, 7 and 8 choose 4 all give values less than 100, so they are ruled out as possible options. And the only remaining option for x that satisfies both criteria is 9. So we can say that the correct answer here is D. Here's that question as it was originally presented in Turkish. We can look through and see some of the other questions. For this one you have P of X, a fourth degree polynomial. You're given all the conditions you need to know about P and then asked to find what is P at 4. In 17 you're asked to find the limit of a rather nasty function without using a calculator. Moving on to some physics, this question here asks us about the relationship between the velocities of three different paths of a golf ball. If we go back to maths for a second, we can find this question here, which can be translated into English, to say that m and n are positive integers. The GCD of m and n plus the LCM of m and n is 289 m plus n is not equal to 289, so find the total m plus n. This one is near the start of the paper and seems like it might be a bit easier, but actually it can be a bit tricky. To help us understand this one, I'm going to turn to Brilliant, who have sponsored this section of the video. We have the situation that hot dogs are sold in packages of 10, while the buns are sold in packages of 8. Suppose you want to buy exactly the same number of hot dogs and buns, what is the minimum amount you will need to buy? This is us having to find the lowest common multiple, the LCM. These are the multiples of 10, these are the multiples of 8, and the lowest common one is 40. Next question, if we want to reduce the fraction 24 over 30 to lowest terms, what number should you divide the numerator and denominator by? The answer is 6, and that is our GCD, the greatest common divisor. These are all the numbers 24 can be divided by, these are all the numbers that 30 can be divided by, and the greatest common one is 6. Going back to our question, let's just call the GCD of m and n some value x. That would mean m can be written as x times some value a, and n would be x times some value b. Now a and b are relatively prime. There's no common factor between them and nothing further that you could divide them both by. That would mean that the lowest common multiple of m and n is x times a times b. So our equation up here becomes x plus x times a b is 289. We can rewrite that as x times 1 plus ab. Here are the table of possible values that would make this true. We can already rule out this second option because if 1 plus ab was equal to 1, then ab would have to be equal to 0, and we know that's not true because m and n are positive integers. So we can try the first option, x is 1 and 1 plus ab is 289, so ab is 288. Being able to factorise this into its prime factors and therefore being able to work out what possible factors it has is a crunch point for this question. But in this little table here I've put the two options for either a or b. Looking at the total m plus n for the first option, we would end up with 1 plus 288, which is 289. However, the question says that that is not allowed, so this is not a possible option. Trying the next option, we have 32 plus 9, which is 41. That's probably the right answer, but we still had one option to try over here, which is when x and 1 plus ab both equal to 17, because 17 squared is 289. To get a times b equal to 16, one has to be 1 and the other has to be 16. You might think that 2 and 8 are also options, but if you remember, a and b are relatively prime. And 2 and 8 have a common factor of 2, so aren't relatively prime. 
This option also ends up giving us that n plus n is 289, which we can't have. So the correct answer to this question is indeed 41. You can do more LCM and GCD problems on Brilliant. Head to brilliant.org slash tibbies to try for yourself. Thanks Brilliant for supporting this video and also thanks to my Patreon supporters. A special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Ember.